Let's look at how to insert an exit button into your course. So the exit button will do as you expect. If you click on it, you'll exit the course. So it is a nice useful button to have rather than telling users to click on the cross at the top of the window or something like that. So I've got a page here, I've already created an exit button. I'll show it to you working, so there is the button. So this slide. Okay, we're previewing the slide. I've got it, so if I hover over it, there's a state. So it changes it from a you know, one color blue to another color blue. But I'm gonna click on the button. There we go. Exit the course. Does exactly what you'd expect. Now, the way it's been created, if I click on this, you'll see that the exit course, when user clicks the exit button, which is what that is, is a trigger. So let's, uh, let's go and have a look. I've created another slide. And let's go and create one of these. Now you can insert a shape, an object, or an actual button. So I'll do a button. There you go, create the button. Put some text in there. Let's, uh, let's just change the, the size of the text and everything. There you go, made a red button. Hopefully you can see that. There you, go, you can definitely see that. So I've got this button of a preview this. Okay, nothing happens. It is a button because I created a button, but I'm clicking on it and nothing's happening. That's because I've not set up the trigger yet. So click on the button, go to triggers, so create a new trigger. And then we've got the options here. So the action is exit course when user clicks on button one, which is what this is. Press OK. Let's preview that. And here we go. You can see it changes state. Click on it, exit the course. But you don't have to have it as a button. But this could have been created just as a shape. So a circle called exit again I'll change the size of it just so we can read it create the trigger and the action is to exit the course when the user clicks on over one the reason that it's already come up is that is because that was the last trigger that we used so it just remembers that can I preview this slide also, it goes without saying, you don't need to put the word exit in there. I'm just doing it so it's obvious. There you go. Doesn't have any states associated with it, so when I hover over it, nothing happens, but click on it, exit the course. So it could be a shape, it could be a box or a button, it could be a uh, could be a image, whatever you want really, or a hotspot. But uh, yeah, that is how you create an exit button. Now, following on from this, what you can actually do you can have it so that it exits, but also then opens up a web page. So let's say you've got a feedback form that you want to use. That's something you can do. So what we need to do is create a trigger. So the trigger will be to open a URL or file, put in the full address of it. There we go. And we want it to be when the user clicks on something. So we'll have it so when they click on button one, do that. Now, what's important is that this action, this trigger, needs to go above the exit course one for the same button. So it must be like this. It must be that, then that in the sequencing. Let's try this out. So if I click on exit course, it says the link is not active while previewing. Now, what it means is that you know, when I'm in the preview mode, it doesn't work. But I can assure you, when we publish the course, it will work. And also, this is indicating to me that it is trying to open up a web page. So what will happen is it'll exit the course and then open up a web page, and then you can have a feedback form, or you can be directing someone to where policies are held, or whatever you want to do with this course. Press OK, it closes the course down. But that is how you do it, and I can assure you, it definitely works. 
So this address obviously is Google, but you can put in whatever address you want. But what is really important is that exit course is located here and then the hyperlink is located above it.